Hello everybody, I've been in Nottingham so I've not been able to film much this week, um, I got back yesterday, it's really cold up there. <laughs> um, this is going to be a video uh, that a few people have been asking for for a while and it's taken me quite a long time to prepare for because I've had to write quite a lot of notes about specific products and things like that. So this is going to be my foundation and face product overview. Now the way this is going to work is I'm going to go through um, my spectrum um, from light to full coverage. Um, I'm going to list every product that I put uh, that I look at in the down bar. I'm also going to show you all of the products so if there's a specific product you want to view I will put the timestamp in the down bar so you can skip ahead to viewing that product. I'm also going to include links to reviews either on my blog or on my YouTube about this product. Um, so if there's any product without a, a link by the side of it then I've not reviewed it and feel free to request a review. So that's the way it's going to work. Um, I'm going to show you all the products now. So this is MAC Studio Moisture Tint. Makeup for other face and body. Christian, Christian Dior, <laughs> Dior Skin Nude, Laura Mercier Mineral Powder, Bourjois Bio Detox, Makeup Forever HD, Nars Sheer Glow, decanted into a sad looking pot, Face Atelier Ultra Foundation, Estee Lauder Double Wear and MAC Pro Long Wear. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the MAC Studio Moisture Tint. This is pretty much the lightest coverage of everything I have. It's a tinted moisturiser but it's actually got very good coverage for a tinted moisturiser. It's best for, I would say, oilier skins as I think this is pretty much one of the best ones I've used. I, I would guess normal to dry as well because it's really moisturising but this is honestly one of the best tinted moisturisers I've used because it has a really nice kind of satin slush matte finish which doesn't make you kind of look a bit sickly whereas some um, dewy tinted moisturisers can make you look kind of a bit shiny and not right. Um, this is really great for summer and for those of you who only like light coverage, it's great for evening out skin tone. Um, yeah, uh, the, so the finish as I've said is kind of a satin matte, your skin but better, but obviously because of the light coverage it's not going to be perfect coverage. Um, and it's got kind of a gel-like formula. So I'm going to go through the pros and cons of this now. Um, one, of, one pro is that it contains SPF 15 which makes it ideal for summer which I think is pretty much what it is aimed at. Um, it's an extremely lightweight formula um, and, it, and it's quite a lot thicker than any other tinted moisturisers I've found in that I've tried the Bobbi Brown tinted moisturiser and I found it really liquidy and horrible to apply and it smelt bad. And um, this is nice and thick and just so nice to rub into your face, just like a moisturiser. Um, it's good coverage for a tinted moisturiser. I find this works really nicely for me and it has a non-greasy feel so it doesn't feel like a lotion, it just feels like an, a nice moisturiser with a matte finish. Um, it is very, very lightweight and it is really, really easy to blend. I'm not sure what's in it but it's easy to blend in the sense that Studio Sculpt is really easy to blend. It is just lovely. Um, the cons, it does have a small shade range, but then again, it is a tinted moisturiser, so you can't really expect loads of coverage with this. It does smell like paint as well, which um, it's not, that's not ideal. Um, it can bring out bad reactions if you use it over the eyes and around the eye area. Now, I have never personally experienced this. Um, I'm pretty much slap it on and go. Um, but I have heard reports that you can get a bad reaction. And the last thing is that it may not be moisturising enough for dry skin. Um, you can't really skip a moisturiser with this. Even me with my oily combination skin, I don't want to skip a moisturiser and just apply this because I know that I will get dry bits on my face. So it may not be a moisturising alternative, may not be moisturising enough. Um, 
it also may not be dewy enough for dry skin. Um, I like to apply this on my fingers. So the next foundation I'm going to talk about is the Makeup for the Face and Body. Now this is light coverage, it's a light coverage foundation, I would probably liken it to the MAC face and body except that this is a crazy texture. I have had people message me about the texture saying, you know, your foundation looks off when I showed it in a haul video. It's not off, It that's just how it is. Um, it does kind of have the texture of kind of curdled custard or like scram like loose scrambled eggs I suppose. It's best for summer. Um, for evening out skin tone, again, um, you know, if you want a bit more coverage than a tinted moisturiser, but you don't need loads of coverage. And I would also say it's best for normal skin. Um, it does make me a bit oily. Um, in terms of pros about this product, I would say that it's a really nice, light feeling foundation that's easily built up. Um, it's got a really great shade range. Makeup Forever are one of those brands that do have really good shade ranges. Um, it is a nice and natural looking finish. Um, it won't look heavy or flat or dull. Uh, it doesn't cake at all, ever. I've never found this to cake. Layer after layer, it does not cake. Um, now, it is really light feeling on the skin. Now, what I'm going to tell you about this, there are a couple of special notes, is that the texture is, can you see it jiggling in there? It looks horrible, but you do need to shake it up like this a little bit, and then I just kind of tip some of the jelly goo onto my hand, and um, I blend it. It is a nice finish for a natural foundation, though. So with the cons, I would say that it can look sweaty in photos, like if you've got oily skin, this kind of will not hold back shine. Um, it doesn't really hang around on my face that long, I do really like this, but it doesn't hang around on my face. It's really strongly scented of roses, but not kind of fresh roses so much as kind of old lady talcum powder roses. Yeah. Um, and it can highlight dry areas because it is, it seems to be, I'm pretty sure it's water based, so it can highlight dry areas on my skin. Um, you can end up using a lot more of this than you realise. As you can see, I don't, I've probably used almost a quarter of the bottle having only used this a few times. So it's really easy to use way more than you think. Um, I think that's all I can say about this. The way I like to apply this is with a flat top brush like the e.l.f powder brush, that's my favourite. Next foundation on the list is Dior Skin Nude. This is a light coverage as well, it is pretty similar in terms of coverage with the Makeup Forever. This is a dewy finish however, so I would recommend this for all types of skin, but particularly dry to normal, because it can make me oily. I mean the finish is absolutely beautiful, I'm wearing it today and I'm absolutely in love with it, I just, it's so easy to apply, but it can make you oily. Um, I'd also recommend this for summer um, and evening out your skin tone, it's just a really, really beautiful foundation. Um, it, it does have a very, very liquid texture and you do need to shake it before you apply it, um, but it does give you a nice kind of natural, dewy, fresh finish. Now in terms of the pros of this foundation, I would say that it is extremely nice and lightweight feeling, it's beautiful. Um, the finish is gorgeous, it gives you really beautiful coverage um, for such a, well, it gives you a nice kind of glow, luminescence to the skin without making you look too dewy. Um, it is really good for evening your skin tone, it gives you just enough coverage for day to day I would say. Um, it never ever cakes. It is so, so buildable. I can pretty much apply pump after pump of this on my face and it won't cake. It's amazing. It's like a an oracle of non-cakiness. It's brilliant. Um, it does contain SPF which makes it kind of a bit unsuitable. It can show up a bit sweaty again in photos. Um, and the cons, I would say that it can really make your skin oily. Um, another con is that it doesn't last as long as other foundations. It doesn't last that long on me. Um, the shade range is pretty lacking, especially in the United Kingdom. That, I mean, there's probably about six to choose from, which I don't think is particularly good. Um, and it can oxidise because of the SPF. 
The way that I like to apply this is with anything because it never, it never streaks, it never cakes, it never does anything wrong. It just doesn't put a step wrong for me. So I prefer kind of, I, I used a flat foundation brush with it today, it's brilliant. I used a flat top brush, brilliant fingers, brilliant anything. This is a really good all rounder. Okay, so the next foundation I'm going to talk about is the Laura Mercier Mineral Powder. Fairly nondescript kind of jar, pretty bulky really. Um, it is light coverage, but you can build this up and it never ever looks powdery. It is a powder formulation, as you can see. I'm just going to get a bit out. don't know if you can see that at all, in fact. Let's get a bit more out. Okay, so it's a powder mineral foundation. Um, it's best for... I would say normal skin because it can cling to dry areas um, and it has lumin luminizing kind of particles in it so it can make you look quite dewy in a short period of time. Um, it gives you an absolutely flawless silky finish however. Um, so we'll go on to the pros about this foundation. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. The, fa the finish of this is lovely, so flawless, so perfect, so beautiful. Um, I will probably just buy this and buy this and buy this. I like to team this with tinted moisturiser in the summer for a bit more coverage. It gives you kind of a dewy glow as opposed to a flat powdery glow. It doesn't look like powder at all on your skin which is really really nice. Um, the packaging is good because it's non-spill. It has a disc which you can turn to cover the holes which is really good and it feels so light on the skin. I put it on today and I couldn't believe how much I love it again. I am obsessed. Um, cons can cling to dry skin. I mean it is a powder so if you've got dry skin or like um, acne kind of healing bits um, it might not be ideal. Um, it can make oily skin a bit oilier um, or appear oilier and it is pricey. Now I like to apply this with a kabuki brush, I've tried a stippling brush like the 187, worked fine, I'm not a massive fan of the 187 so I won't advocate that, um, and I really like the flat top powder brush by e.l.f, so all of those, kabuki obviously for lighter, um, not lighter, faster application. Okay, Bourjois Bio Detox, um, I bought this because I thought a lot of people have said good things about it, so I thought, okay, well, oh, I'll have a look. Oh, I'll give it a go. Um, it is a light medium coverage, and it can cake upon building, so I think that you're pretty much limited to a, about one. One um, swish, I suppose. Um, I think it's best for... Uh, well, they say supposedly oily skins because it's mattifying. I say normal skin because this makes me oily. Um, I am not particularly satisfied with this foundation. The notes, 98.8% um, natural and 21% organic is the main selling point. It also contains chlorophyll to draw oxygen to your skin and keep your skin purified. Um, it does have a, a, a pretty matte finish but not a flat matte, uh, quite a nice matte finish. Now. This, the pros for this, um, it's supposed to be good for the skin. It feels lightweight on the skin. Um, hmm, let's think of some more pros. It has a nice creamy texture. It's anti-pollution and anti-free radical stopping thing. Yeah, it, it stops free radicals from entering your skin. I have a lot more cons for this than pros. I actually struggled to find things to, positive to say about this foundation. The first thing is that it's scented. It smells kind of like cucumber slash melon slash green, I guess because of the chlorophyll. It's got this synthetic fragrance, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, the shades run yellow. This can make me look like a Simpson if I'm not very careful. Um, it also sets very quickly and it sticks to dry areas. I don't like this very much. Um, as for application directions, um, I apply this with anything that I can move my hands fast enough with, to be honest. I like um, flat top brushes because they're no fuss and pretty much, you know, you can easily just swipe buff around your face. But anything that you can apply this fast enough with because it will set and then it will cake. Not my favourite. 
feel like a newsreader.